Sup, chums. So do you peeps all remember pyrolutabide? You know, the breakthrough topical anti-androgen that was supposed to be even better than dutasteride, some were saying? Well, unfortunately, even though the treatment is commercially available, it didn't turn out to be quite the hair loss treatment we were all hoping it would be. The last official results we heard about pyrolutabide were the disappointing results of the phase 3 trials, where 0.5% topical pyrolutabide was applied to the scalp twice per day. The results did show increased hair growth, However, the big problem here is that the increase was not any more than what was seen in the placebo group. It did seem like the placebo group did perform unusually well in the trial, though, so it is possible this outcome was a statistical fluke, but nevertheless, these results were a huge disappointment for the hair loss community at large, and for a while, it even looked like Kintor might be giving up on pyrolutamide so they can focus their efforts on much more promising upcoming treatments that they're developing, like GT20029. However, after all this happened, we heard that Kintor decided to release pyrolutabide in a stronger concentration of 1%. But rather than release it as a pharmaceutical, which requires a lot of testing, they decided to exploit a loophole by releasing it as a cosmetic product instead. That way, it wouldn't have to undergo such strict testing in order for it to be released. And indeed, pyrolutabide is a product you can currently buy right now in both a 0.5% or 1% formula. And I'm not even talking about great market products. The treatment is actually sold commercially, and it's available under the trade name of Koshine 826 even though it is quite expensive at the moment. So now we have this new announcement from Kintor that shows that not only is it not giving up on pyrolutabide, but it actually is doubling down on studying it. First of all, Kintor is actually doing a study looking at their 1% concentration cosmetic product. It's called the, quote, Pivotal Clinical Trial, unquote. They're calling the product KX826 Tincture 1%. KX826 is Kintor's code name for pyrolutabide, which is what they're still calling it. So, the announcement says that the first subject was enrolled in this new trial. So obviously, we don't have any results just yet, but the announcement does give us some very important information about this study. The new study is a combined Phase 2 and Phase 3 study. The Phase 2 study will look at three treatment groups. The first group will get 0.5% pyrolutabide twice per day, the second group will get 1% pyrolutabide twice per day, and the third group will just get a placebo. So, what they're comparing here is the 0.5% concentration that had disappointing results in the Phase 3 trial to a stronger concentration of 1%. However, since this is a cosmetic product and not a pharmaceutical, it sounds like this isn't just pure pyrolutabide. It's pyrolutabide tincture, or whatever that is supposed to be. My guess is that it's probably the same thing as pyrolutabide, but it's probably got some other fancy but worthless ingredients in it like biotin. But whatever else they may put in it, probably the only true active ingredient in the product will be pyrolutamide. So this phase 2 trial will be done at 10 research centers in China and will enroll 90 subjects. After it is complete, a larger phase 3 trial will be done at 25 research centers in China. The study design will be the same, and each study will last for 24 weeks. The announcement then gives us some rather interesting information. Apparently, there is some actual internal company research showing that 1% concentration should actually be superior to the 0.5% concentration, which is exactly what we've all been hoping for. The report says, quote, The company's preclinical studies have shown that the KX826 tincture 1% has significantly increased the retention concentration of the tincture on human scalp cells compared to the KX826 tincture 0.5% used in the previous phase 3 clinical trial and is expected to enhance the clinical efficacy." Unquote. So there's very good reason to believe that the 1% pyrolutabide solution actually will work better than 0.5%. The second part of the announcement has to do with a long-term safety phase 3 trial which was started in July of 2023. This was an open-label study, meaning it was not double-blinded. It was intended to look at the safety of pyrolutabide over the long term, in this case being 52 weeks. Unfortunately, this long-term safety trial only used low-dose pyrolutabide the 0.5% concentration twice per day rather than the 1% concentration. But the good news here, Chums, is that the study actually is completed and I have the results from the 95 subjects who were enrolled in the study. First of all, there were no serious adverse events in the study. That's good news, of course, Chums, since after all, pyrolutabide is an androgen receptor blocker and if it did go systemic, then it would definitely cause hypogonadal side effects. But it didn't do that, fortunately. The only real side effect was some itching that was mild, which is pretty similar to what people get from any topical treatment, including minoxidil. However, what's much more important and interesting here is that we also have the efficacy results, Jooms, and these efficacy results are better than what was seen in the original Phase 3 trial. Quote, 
In terms of efficacy, after 12, 24, 36, and 52 weeks treatment, both target area hair counts and target area non-vellus hair widths showed an increase from baseline, among which the hair counts increased by 9.5%, 13%, 11.4%, and 9.7% respectively. The hair width increased by 12.1%, 18.6%, 15.7%, and 10% respectively, with statistically significant results. Such results were significantly better than the results from the the previous 0.5% phase 3 clinical trial at 24 weeks." Unquote. The report looks at the results also from the point of view of what percentage of subjects attained certain hair count increases. At the end of 52 weeks, 48.4% of subjects had hair count increases of at least 10 hairs per square centimeter, 20.4% of subjects had increases of at least 20 hairs per square centimeter, and 11.8% had increases of at least 30 hairs per square centimeter. Finally, based on an overall assessment of hair growth by the investigators, 54% of subjects had improvements in hair growth after 52 weeks of treatment. So this sounds reasonably good, though there are a couple of notes of caution that I think are worth mentioning here. First, this was not a blinded trial. Every subject got pyrolutamide, and both the subjects and the investigators knew that everybody was getting pyrolutamide. That kind of study design could potentially overestimate this treatment effect, especially when looking at the overall assessment of hair growth by the investigators who might be biased towards hoping that pyrolutamide is effective. Also, since there was no placebo control group, we can't compare the results to a control group in order to assess the actual drug effect. If there had been a control group, there could have been significant growth in it as well, which would make the growth in this treatment less impressive. This is exactly what happened with the original phase 3 study, which ended up showing no significant difference between the hair growth in the treatment group versus the control group, so that's a little suspect. Nevertheless, though, these results seem to be stronger than the results of the original phase 3 trial, which makes it completely possible that the lack of statistically significant results in the first trial may have just been a fluke, which is something I have been saying for a long time now. And remember, this study was still just using the 0.5% concentration of pyrolutamide, not the 1% newer concentration, which we know should be better. So these results make it seem probable that the 1% concentration could give even better results in the new pivotal clinical trial. So the bottom line here, Chooms, is that it is premature to close the books on pyrolutamide. Kintor is still very very much invested in trying to prove that this drug is effective, and so far they have made a pretty strong case that their product actually is effective. I think we can look forward to the results of the upcoming pivotal clinical trials in the coming months. Supposedly, there is also a pyrolutamide versus minoxidil trial that is going on too, and I'd be very curious about that, so hopefully we get our research on that one soon. So pyrolutamide is definitely not dead yet, Jones. I wouldn't say it is a proven product yet, of course, but it is still much too soon to disregard it entirely. We need more research but fortunately, we now know for certain that we're going to get the research very soon and we can finally get the answers on this product that we have all been waiting so long for for so many years now, in fact. So I'll go ahead and give you guys an update as soon as I get that research. But until then, I'll see you all next time here Law Switchers. Thank you for watching. God bless.